Hi everyone. Um, we all know what's going on in Is Israel. Israel. Um, we know what's going on on the border, and now that we know that um, Israel got that border agreement, I, I've been trying to think of solutions. But um, I actually think that I, I'm going to leave a PDF of how much foreign aid we have given. Just our our tax dollars that we know of has been given to Israel, and it's more than I ever thought it was. Um, so I will be leaving that in the link, and I'll let you read it, because it's very long for me to go through this and, and read it to you. And then I want to tell you something about something that happened, and, and there was an act. It was called the 1940 Nationality Act. And um, this act provides that a U.S. citizen, whether by birth or naturalization, shall lose his U.S. nationality by voting in a political election in a foreign state. And most of our representatives, Republicans and Democrats, are dual citizenships uh, with Israel. And they mainly focus on um, Rahm Emanuel, which if anyone wanted um, to get rid of Rahm Emanuel, I mean, you can make some noise and probably do that. However, I think boycotting um, and sanctioning, and, and I'm going to call my representatives. I did yesterday. I'm going to call them today. I don't know if we can call the UN for war crimes, but it's time. I mean, I don't even believe in this system, but obviously we're going to have to bring them to their knees one way or another. But I found out that there was a U.S. Israel Economic Cooperation Anti-Boycott Regulations that started in 1976 to 1977. And although I don't know how far it has went into as of right now, I can tell you that I went to a co-op and Rachel Corey, I, if you don't know who Rachel Corey is, I'll leave that down below. She was killed defending uh, a Palestinian doctor and a bulldozer ran her over and then backed up and ran her flat. She was just a U.S. citizen, a young girl <clears throat> who was an activist. And so our, our the co-op I go to is right down the road. Actually, Kenny's mom lived across the street from the young girl. Now, what I'm trying to say is our boy, our co-op and, and a lot of people around this area are van, very anti-Israel because of that, that happening. Israel never offered an apology, um, <clears throat> didn't care, and we, that co-op started boycotting all Israeli products. Uh, the court costs got phenomenal, so the prices went up at the co-op. But people paid because they wanted to make sure this went through. This year, finally, I think um, a court of appeals said, yes, they can, boy we can. Our co-op can boycott Israel. That's how much power Israel has in the United States over one little organic co-op that boycotted Israel. We were taken, that, that co-op was taken to court several times and almost closed down. <clears throat> and all kind of mean, nasty things happened. Well, anyway, there there were laws, and I'm sure that I, I haven't looked any farther because I've been doing so much research, and I had to go see my doctor today. But um, it, this is what it says. It says that you're not allowed to boycott them. Um, businesses can't. Um, agreements to refuse or actually ref refuse to do business with or, with or in Israel are blacklisted companies. Agreements to discriminate or an actual discrimination against other persons. Uh, I understand the race and stuff, but if, if you are a small business owner and you don't want to send your product to Israel, that's your business. If you don't like the way they're conducting their genocide on Palestine, that's your business. Also, this has maps, the site I'm going to leave. I, I hope you go through this site. It's called the Jewish Virtual Library. And it has maps, and this is what I'm going to show you. I'm going to pull up the maps if I can. I know they have state maps in here. That's not the one. Dad, gummit, let me go back. Um, I'll leave it on the, I think, on the one where it shows the state maps. Okay, let me put, I'm going to turn my camera around. So hold on, bear with me. Um, right here, let me see if you can see let me just focus on this. U.S. Israel Relations State-to-State -state Cooperation. And you can actually click 
and I live in Washington State, I can click on my map, I can go down here, and, and this is up to date from 2013, um, how much money in exports we gave to Israel. Um, this, this goes on and on, military contracts, how much. I mean, this is agriculture. You just have to see this. So not only, the, what, what my point is, they, they run the borders now. Not only are they, you know, they don't want us to boycott them. We have dual citizens running our country, which is against the law, because that was an act in 1940. Now states, which I had no idea, states contributed to Israel also. And not just a little bit of money, a lot of money. So I'm going to leave the PDF of how much we actually give. And there's all kind of different aid. And what this means is while we have homeless people in vacant buildings where homeless people could be, people are hungry, people are struggling by the skin of their teeth, every tax dollar we get goes to Israel. I don't even think the people work over there. I mean, I think the average household, it said 27000 on one thing, but then someone else was doing the figures and they said every household gets at least $50,000 and that's our tax dollars. Free money. Free money. And then we build their military up. Is there something wrong with this? So I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call representatives and I'm going to insist sanctions against Israel. Plus I think they owe us a lot of money. We're not the United States of Israel. Although it looks like we are. Obviously maybe we are and we didn't see that um, you know, blacklisted thing that the unofficial stuff we're not allowed to see. But as far as I'm concerned, I want no part of this, not in my name. I am tired of this. Um, and now knowing that they control the border and they're basing it on what they've been doing in Palestine, that is their basis now for controlling borders since they're so good at genocide. I think every one of us should call even local representatives since I have this map here and you can click on that and I will leave that as the first link and then go through the little, there's little sidebars on there. I want you to go through there and find out all kinds of information like even some of the founding fathers were Zionist. I didn't realize that. You, you'll have to dig into that one yourself. They were writing letters like Sam Adams to Thomas Jefferson saying about Zionism. I had no idea that word was even around back when the people, I, you know, I'll just use the word founding fathers. So, um, wow, there's a lot of things I've learned just off this one site. So, um, I'm going to leave these links for you. I hope my other video didn't really offend you. I was pissed, but, you know, the word patriots is, a, they use, English is a very dumb language. I don't know why people don't want to learn another language that isn't, so, um, a lot of people understand it has, it's almost like a magic language. It, it has two meanings, one to us and one to them. It's a wordplay language. Like if I say, I understand, you think I comprehend it to the government. It means I admit I'm a slave. I stand under them. Those are the, the you know, it means one thing to them and one thing, a different thing to us. Learning a different language is only going to benefit you. So English actually shouldn't be our primary language. I say we learn so many languages, we confuse the hell out of them. I mean, seriously. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to put this out there, but please check these links below. This will frighten you. I'm not trying to frighten you because we've got to find solutions. And I say boycott, sanction, war crimes right now in Israel, and we've got to get Elbit Systems off our borders. Love you guys. Peace.